Okay, so I was asked the question on do people have individual spiritual journeys? Um, you know, is is non-duality the right journey for everyone or enlightenment the right journey for everyone? Well, I would say that, um, yes, I mean, uh, you could say that depending on um, the uh, ego belief systems, where they are, and the, the lifespan of the body, not everyone will be choosing a non-duality or enlightenment in this lifetime. It may not be something that uh, is a calling for them. Um, it may not be something that is a calling for them because, um, you know, they're more interested in football or eating donuts or something this lifetime. So enlightenment, spiritual enlightenment wouldn't be interesting uh, uh, in this lifetime. But maybe in another lifetime, probably at some lifetime, it will become interesting. Um, so uh, is is non-duality or enlightenment right for me? Well, generally, um, if there is, um, if you're doing it, if you're being called to the work and it feels true, then I would say that's, um, that's, um, uh, it's, it's, it's right for you. You're ready. Your spirit is ready to let go of all limitations and, and start doing the work of unburdening all limitations. So I would say it's a great, um, uh, it's a great, um, what I would say, great good fortune, great good fortune to want to be free in this lifetime and for the, the, the willingness and the grace to start releasing all the, all the uh, limiting ideas that one is suffering from or being trapped by or in bondage to. So um, I think there was also part of the question was, what about if I'm following the wrong teaching or the wrong teacher? That again is um, is is something. I mean, I guess um, uh, I would say then if you're really worried because it is very difficult for spiritual students, and there are a lot of false teachers out there, you know that are uh, and also um, something I'll start sharing more about there are a lot of fallen teachers, so teachers who were once very high but have fallen for temptation and yet carry on teaching, uh, and so that can cause a lot of distress for students as well. So there's lots of lots of pitfalls. So how do you, um, I mean, um, if you're listening to this video, how how would you keep yourself more safe? Well, there's always the the traditional teachers that have died and are known to be you know are known to be true teachers. It's kind of kind of obvious. Uh, Jesus Christ, Buddha, uh, Krishna, um, even though I'm not so well known now. I mean, Ramana Maharishi. So, uh, I mean, I, I fully vouch for he's dead now, Dr. David R. Hawkins. Um, you know, so these teachers, um, uh, if you follow their teachings, you don't have the risk of them actually falling while you're um, following them. You know, so, I mean, you, uh, there are stories of teachers who um, are, are very, very, well, it's obvious they are very, very high. And then suddenly something becomes quite bizarre. And I'd say that that, that usually in, uh, could indicate the the fall from grace. Um, and I will I will shoot some videos eventually of, of what the different temptations of are of going into high high spaces, which are different to uh, just being stuck in your ego at a very dense level. So um, so yes, I think uh, generally speaking, um, if you're following one of the old teachers, whether it's Jesus Christ, Krishna, Buddha. Um, I also vouch for Ramana Maharishi and Dr. David R. Hawkins. They're all dead, these teachers. So, you know, uh, they can't really fall from grace or, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, I would um, bet my soul on it. So that's something uh, I don't want to uh, say that they're all good teachers to follow. Um, so, yeah, and otherwise, um, you, um, you know, there is a risk, you know, with teachers, but... Um, yeah, all students just have to follow as best they can and hope they're not uh, following a false teacher. Uh, but I, you know, I have recommended teachers in this video, which I would say if you follow any of them, um, uh, I put my I put myself behind them all. Okay. Uh, 